What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Ray Garvin here to kick off Fantasy Week at Bleacher Report. And fantasy football season is here. The first week of the preseason underway. This is draft or pass. We've got a lot of players to talk about. I'm excited. Football is back. Fantasy Week kicking off. And your boy Ray GQ in the building to have some fun with you. And what a better way to start off Fantasy Week than talking about rookies because everybody loves rookies and we got to see these guys play and some of them played extended extended time uh during week one of the preseason so let's just talk through a couple of these rookies that people are excited about should you be should you be streaming these guys or should you be starting them heading into week one of our fantasy football season and since i live in the great state of texas we have to start with the dallas cowboy and i'm talking about dallas cowboys rookie wide receiver jalen tolbert who right now is penciled in as the starting wide receiver for the cowboys with injury to Michael Gallup and James Washington was not the best debut for Jalen Tolbert, right? Still have a lot of hope for him this upcoming season, but right now he is not on the start radar to start the season. Somebody that you would stream, you'd only play in desperate situations early, but he's a player that you got to keep on your radar because as time goes on, he definitely could develop into a quality starter for us. Maybe a flex play, but right now it was one preseason game, seven targets, two receptions, alligator arm to ball. We're going to, we're going to stream. We're going to, we're, we're going to stream Jalen Tober. We're not going to start him right now uh, from, from the rookie, from the rookies. Now, Kansas city, Isaiah Pacheco is the hot name, and you see his ADP not just creeping up. I mean, it is on an escalator, right? An elevator all the way up. His ADP continues to rise because he's playing on one of the better offenses in the NFL with one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL in a running back room that is very unproven. Right now, he's running behind Clyde edwards Lair as the clear number two in Kansas City. Isaiah Pacheco going into this season, I didn't think much from this almost undrafted player, but the way that he's been performing in training camp and early in the preseason, only one game, I definitely think Isaiah Pacheco is going to be on that start radar, maybe a flex guy as early as week one. Still have two more games, but we'll see how this plays out. Now, that player that everybody is talking about because he's got that dog in him. He's got that dog in him. And I'm talking about GP George Pickens of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Listen, he's starting. He's starting wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's going to be starting from week one. The issue with George Pickens is the quarterback play. Mitchell Trubisky, we're hearing Mason Rudolph, Kenny Pickett looked okay. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, George Pickens is somebody that I think, I think you may want to play uh, from the from the very start of the season, week one. But we've got to get into uh, we've got to get into uh, some of the other players that we're going to talk about uh, with quarterbacks in particular. We got to get into that. Want to see what we're going to do with some of these NFL quarterbacks, not the rookies, the ones that have actually played, right? So we're going to start a little uh, a little draft or pass here coming up with uh, with some of these quarterbacks. And the chat is active. Please keep the comments coming in. I see you guys talking a little. Jamar Chase, Debo Samuel, Dalvin Cook, Najee Harris. We're going to get to all of that here uh, very, very shortly. So uh, do let's let's just take one from at M N M A N. So M N man, Chase or Debo. Uh, both are going to be awesome. Uh, both are going to be fantastic. I'm going to roll with the guy that's got the proven NFL quarterback in Joe Burrow. So if you're asking me right now, Jamar Chase or Debo Samuel, uh, let me give me the guy that's catching balls from Joe from Joe Burrow. I, I still Need to see what uh, what Trey Lance is going to be. I'm excited about him this year. Really excited about his rushing floor and what he could what he can do. But let's start with uh, let's start with Joe Burrow. Let's go Jamar Chase over Debo Samuel 100. percent We are we are rolling with that with that selection. Now uh, we've got quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, defense, and kicker that we have to get to today. Um, so, uh, where do we want to go? Let me see who you guys have up first, and then we'll do a little draft or pass here, uh, with, uh, with these guys for 2022. And while we get that up, I think, uh, here we go. Here we go. Draft or pass. Let's have some fun here. we got Josh Allen and Justin Herbert, and both of these players should be fantastic. But I'm going with Josh Allen. This is this is an easy choice for me. We're not talking dynasty. I'm not talking about 10 years from now. This season, the most dynamic quarterback 
in the NFL right now with what he can do from uh, the pocket with his arm and then also the rushing ability that he gives you. It's it's Josh Allen with this Buffalo offense, the addition of James Cook in the backfield, giving him another weapon to throw to. We saw some Khalil Shakir this past preseason. Maybe he can develop into a competent number three, number four wide receiver. But Josh Allen playing on one of the best offense, dynamic quarterback, going to be their red zone running back. Draft, 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 Josh Allen. And that's not to discredit Justin Herbert, but we got to go with Josh Allen uh, to kick this thing off. No doubt about it. Josh Allen, I hope y'all feel the same way. I know there's some Herbert lovers out there, but this one should be pretty simple. Coming off the board is QB1 right now. Uh, according to Underdog ADP, we got to rock with Josh Allen on that one. I'm seeing the chat active. The chat is active. Uh, ooh, all right, all right. C.D. Lamb or Devontae Adams? I'm in Dallas, so anytime I see a Cowboys player come up, I'm going to uh, I'm going to answer that question. Uh, I'm going to take C.D. Lamb. I believe he's catching quarter pe- catching the ball from the better quarterback in Dak Prescott. I like that offense. C.D. Lamb is the unquestioned one, just like Devontae Adams is the unquestioned one in Las Vegas. I got a little more confidence in Dak Prescott than I do Derek Carr this year. So if you're asking me, C.D. Lamb or Devontae Adams, C.D. Lamb playing on an offense that does not have a Darren Waller, that does not have a Hunter Renfro even as the two. We just talked about Jalen Tolbert at the top of the stream. I'm going to take CeeDee Lamb this season over Devontae Adams. I appreciate the question. Who you guys got for me next? Who do you got for me next? We did Josh Allen. Who do we have next? Let's do some more draft. Or pa- oh, you're throwing Patty Mahomes up here. Kansas City fans, don't be upset with me because I love one Patrick Mahomes, but I got a pass on Pat Mahomes, and I'm still riding with Josh Allen. You throw Herbert up, I'm riding with Allen. You throw Patrick Mahomes up, I'm riding with Josh Allen. Mahomes is awesome, but he's throwing to three brand new receivers. And as much as we like the rookie Sky Moore, MVS, Juju Smith-Schuster, it, I, I just anticipate there are going to be some growing pains for this offense, even though it's probably still going to be very good. But I am drafting Josh Allen. I'm passing on Patrick Mahomes. Give me the stallion. Give me the six foot five, 240 pound freak. Josh Allen is the guy that we're drafting. And I love you, Patrick Mahomes. We got to pass. We have to pass. All right. Who do you guys have for me next? Some more draft or pass? Give me, give me somebody good. Let's make this interesting. Who do we have? Somebody has to unseat. Jo- okay. All right. This was the one I didn't want to see. Um, and people may not like it, but I do think this is setting up very well for Lamar Jackson comeback season and potentially push for the top quarterback spot. I'm not going to do it, though. Lamar, I love you. I know that you are a walking thousand yard rusher and Rashad Bateman is there and Mark Andrews. But I've got to pass on you, Lamar. And I'm still rocking with Josh Allen. He claimed the throne. He's still at the top. I I do not believe. I'm just going to say it like this. I don't believe there's a better quarterback for fantasy football in 2022 in the NFL than one Josh Allen. Uh, Lamar Jackson, we love you to death. I know you're going to crush it this year. You want to get your bag. But Josh Allen, we're riding with Josh Allen. We are drafting him and passing on Lamar Jackson. That's the last quarterback that we're going to talk about. Nobody's unseating one Josh Allen. So let's move on uh, to the wide receivers. But before we do that, as we're getting set up, I want to answer a couple of questions. Young City. This is a tough one. At Young City says Sky Moore or James Cook. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, running back, you lean running back, right? You know, they, they're, they're stable. They get the work. Unfortunately, I don't think James Cook is going to be penciled in as a starter. Devin Singletary is going to get every opportunity to carry the ball in between the 20s. James Cook probably going to be used as a primary pass-catching running back. Give me the guy that's probably on the field with Patrick Mahomes 70 80% of the time. I'm taking Sky Moore over James Cook. So our quarterback room, Josh Allen sitting at the top. We're moving on to wide receivers for some draft or pass. Are we ready for the wide receivers? We've got one more, one more question one more question. Carr is better than Dak from Baketown. I disagree with you there, but I like me some Derek Carr, but I'm still taking Dak Prescott over Derek Carr 10 out of 10 times. I love the addition of Devontae Adams, but uh, yeah, we're, we're still rolling with Dak for this year. And Dak still gives you, I know he's not the Konami code of the past, but he does still have some touchdown upside on the ground rushing as well. Whereas Derek Carr, 
probably not his forte. So I, I'm still taking Dak Prescott over Derek Carr. Love it, though. Love it. Love the conviction. Love the conviction there, Baketown. But we're still rolling with Dak Prescott. And I promise you that is not a byproduct of being a homer here in Texas. I'm very objective when it comes to those type of things. At least I'd like to say. All right. Where are we at? Draft or pass? Are we ready for some wide receivers? I think we got some good young wide receivers that we're going to talk about. Maybe some uh, some sleeper kind of guys. Up oh, Here we go. All right. All right. All right. We'll put the homerism aside. I do like what Jalen Tolbert could potentially bring to the Cowboys offense as the number two catching passes from Dak Prescott. But we're passing on Jalen Tolbert. Get him off of the screen. This is simple. This is a warm-up. It's Devontae Adams. Give me Tay Adams, the unquestioned number one target in Las Vegas this year, paired up with his old college buddy, Derek Carr. They're probably going to make sweet music in Las Vegas this year. Is it going to be as good as what it was when he was playing with uh, Aaron Rodgers? I doubt it because he's one of the most, if not the most efficient quarterback to ever play the game in his prime. But that was an easy one. I just had to throw Tolbert out there. Wanted to talk about him and keep her, keep him on your radar, but that's an easy one. Devontae Adams, let's get it. Devontae Adams, Jalen Tolbert, easy peasy. What do we got next? Who do we have next? Who's going to who's gonna challenge Devontae Adams here on this draft or pass uh, 2022 fantasy edition? MT. Okay. Let me just say this. The answer is Devontae Adams, but, 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 the big thing with Michael Thomas is we did not think or we did not know how healthy that ankle was going to be going into the season. And based on every piece of information that I've been able to gather from the New Orleans Saints training camp, he's back looking like MT of the past. Now, we know Drew Brees isn't there, but Michael Thomas healthy and on the field is the number one target, and he is going to get every opportunity to just command a ridiculous target share. And I think he's in for a big season but I can't take that leap and take him over Devontae Adams. But MT, M if MT versus some other players, I may, I may shock y'all and take Michael Thomas. But the answer here is we're drafting Devontae Adams and we are passing on Michael Thomas. But I want MT and you should want MT as well. His ADP is constantly rising as more and more positive reports out of training camp start to emerge. But we got to roll with Devontae Adams with that one. So Devontae Adams is two for two. Nobody has uh, really challenged him yet. So hopefully we get a couple of players up here that we could see will potentially unseat one uh, Devontae Adams. Who we got? Who we got next on draft or pass? Who we? Okay. And there we go. There we go. Just, just Devontae. We love you, but Justin Jefferson, Minnesota Vikings wide receiver, third-year pro, right? Regression last year. There's no way he can he could replicate what he did as a rookie. Uh, no, he didn't. You're right. He just was better than what he was his rookie season. And this new Kevin O'Connell offense, uh, everybody, they're saying Justin Jefferson is uncoverable at Vikings training camp. This is easy. I'm getting Justin Jefferson. Uh, give, give me Justin Jefferson Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, every day of the week. Justin Jefferson, we are drafting him. Devontae Adams, you represented yourself well, but we got to pass for, pass on you now. Justin Jefferson, we are drafting him. I, I, I don't think a 1,700-yard season is out of the realm of possibility for Justin Jefferson this year. He should go absolutely berserk, and I am excited for him. Kirk Cousins opening up. Justin Jefferson, we're drafting him. So long, Devontae. It was fun. But it's Jets' turn now. Let's go. One of the best young wide receivers in the NFL. One of the best wide receivers we've seen come in the NFL through his first couple of years. Justin Jefferson, absolute stud. We're drafting him. Who we got? 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 Uh-oh. The last one. The last one. Ah, save the best for last. This is tough because we got the triple crown winner himself, Cooper Cup, who just completed the greatest wide receiver season ever in the history of the NFL. And, you know, they won the Super Bowl and they're running it back with Matthew Stafford. He gets some help opposite of him with Allen Robinson. This is tough. Uh, this one, this is the hardest drafter pass that we've done yet. And I've got to stick with Jets. I know Cooper Cup is going to do the damn thing this year. He is going to ball out. He's going to catch his 100 balls. He's going for 1,500 yards. He's going to score. He's going to be awesome. But that season that he had last year, I, I, I do not think he can duplicate that. That was all-time great. Justin Jefferson. We are drafting Justin Jefferson and passing on Cooper Cup. Let me know what y'all think. Let's head to the chat real quick before we run into running backs. And let me see what we got here. Here we go. Dalvin Cook. 
or Najee Harris in PPR? Very, very good question. This is uh, this comes from who who asked this? Uh, Keegan Re- Reifer. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the chat. <sighs> Dalvin Cook a lot more efficient than Najee Harris this year. I think he's going to be a much more efficient player. But that Pittsburgh offense is going to be bad, y'all. Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, Kenny Pickett. I don't care who it is. Everything is going to flow through Najee. He is going to be volume dependent, and he may volume his way to being the top running back this season. I think I'm going to take Najee Harris over Dalvin Cook, but this is close because Minnesota's offense is better. I think it's going to be more efficient in Minnesota, but Najee Harris playing 90-something percent of the snaps last year, unheard of, and there's nobody to challenge him. We're going to go with Najee Harris over Dalvin Cook, volume-based approach. And then that's a great segue because we're going to ride into the running backs and do a little draft or pass running back edition. So who do you have for me? Our quarterback so far, we got Josh Allen, Justin Jefferson, And we start off with a very difficult one. Of course, Austin Eckler or the king, Derrick Henry. Comeback season for one Derrick Henry, who amazingly missed half of the season and was still a top 10 rusher in the league. Just just insane what Derrick Henry has done uh, throughout the course of his career as a starting running back. But I'm going to take Austin Eckler. Uh, He's just the efficiency monster. He's getting the work in the receiving game. He's going to do enough on the ground. Touchdown upside. Justin Herbert. I like the offense better. They improved the offensive line with Rashawn Slater last year. They take Zion Johnson, the guard out of Boston College. Uh, You know, the wide receivers are there. Tennessee, it's all King Henry. I mean, I love Traylon, but it's all King Henry. I love you, King, but we have to pass. Give me Austin Eckler, who I believe might be the second best running back for fantasy football purposes this year behind Jonathan Taylor. Love the King, but we're rocking with Austin Eckler. Who we got? Who's going to unseat Austin Eckler? We're going to make it a conversation. We got to make it a conversation. Okay. All right. This is an easy one, right? It's Austin Eckler, but I wanted to bring Isaiah Pacheco up here because he is getting the hype. We've seen his ADP rise by 27, 28, 29 slots over the past week. And as the preseason continues to go on, I know that the enthusiasm around Pacheco is only going to grow. But don't be silly, folks. This is I'm seeing people out here reach to epic proportions. Remember a couple of years ago when people were telling us Clyde Edwards-Hilaire should be drafted 101 in fantasy? Don't make that mistake again. Pay attention. Isaiah Pacheco is somebody that needs to be on our radar, somebody that we're probably going to play. But do not, I repeat, do not put him in the category as being a top 12 running back this season, a top 15 running back. I see er, I see people making this mistake early on. Pass, get Pacheco off the screen. Get Pacheco out of there. No Isaiah Pacheco. Good streamer, somebody we need to pay attention to. But do not be silly, folks. Do not put him in the top 10, 15 any of that right now. Let's let it play out. Austin Eckler, easy peasy. Who we got next? Who we got next here? Who's going to take down? Oh, boy. There he is. The man, the myth, the legend. One of the greatest fantasy seasons of all time. One Christian McCaffrey who has burned us two years. And I know a lot of people out there, you just, the taste is in your mouth. And you're just like, I, I can't, I can't do it with CMC as an injury. Listen, I, I'm not factoring any injury. Right, we're, we're looking at where they are today, and right now Christian McCaffrey's hamstrings are healthy. Christian McCaffrey's playing. There's an upgrade at quarterback with Baker Mayfield. I'm actually going to have some conviction here, folks. I, I, I think if there's any running back that can challenge JT to be the guy this season, it's Christian McCaffrey. We know what he can do in the receiving game. He's going to get his fair share of work in the running game. They bring in a competent backup in Deontay Foreman. I'm actually going to draft Christian McCaffrey over Austin Eckler with the projection to say at the end of the season, when we look back, CMC is still that dude. He's still that man. And he's going to help us win some fantasy championships this fall. I'm not worried about the last two years. Give me some Christian McCaffrey. I'm in on Christian McCaffrey here in 2022. So Austin Eckler, you had a nice little run. Chair off the screen. Christian McCaffrey, we got you in the building, baby. Christian McCaffrey, we got one more. One more that we can kind of talk about. Do we have somebody else from the running back position that we could bring up here? And there it is. What a beautiful segue behind the scenes. Jonathan Taylor. And he's the RB1, right? You got to draft JT. He is the RB1. Don't get cute. I know I talked all that stuff about Christian McCaffrey. I talked all that hot noise about Austin Eckler challenging. Now, they may challenge, but the king is the king. And Jonathan Taylor 
fantasy football here in 2022. He is the king, and you got to draft him at the top. Christian McCaffrey, pass. You're done. Jonathan Taylor, welcome to my squad. I want you. Let's go, JT. We're, we're passing on Christian McCaffrey, and we are rocking with Jonathan Taylor. And I, 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 listen, you can put somebody else up there, but I'm just telling you right now, we are going to pass because it's Jonathan Taylor. But if we want to talk about another running back and you want to throw it on the screen, we can. But JT is the one, will be the one, and should probably return uh, RB1 value this season. Hell, player value, number one uh, overall. He's just set to smash Matt Ryan and that offense looking good. And JT is the last. So JT is the last. Let's go to the chat. Let's see what the people are saying. Another Cowboys question. You know, you know, the weight of my heart is to bring up Cowboys players. Saquon Barkley or Ezekiel Elliott? Listen, if y'all watch the preseason like I did, the, the Giants are, are, are probably not going to be good. I'm sorry, Giants fans, but Daniel Jones just is not it. The only player that I want on that offense is Saquon Barkley. And if you're asking me Saquon or Zeke, Give me Saquon Barkley. I know he's going to be involved in the in the passing game. He's going to get all the work on the ground. Give me Saquon Barkley. Again, another player who suffered injuries over the past couple of years. So that taste in fantasy gamers' mouths is a little sour. But don't, don't trip. Don't trip. Saquon's going to be all right this season. All right. We've got tight ends. Tight ends. The, the position that you probably could stream the most in fantasy. But if you have an elite guy, an elite player... That point per game differential that you get with one of the elite tight ends is one of the biggest gaps in fantasy football next to the quarterback position. So this draft or pass is very important with some of these tight ends. So let's get some tight ends up on the board and have a little battle royale with some of these tight ends right here. Who do we got? Oh, everybody's favorite tight end, Kyle Pitts. And then the tight end of the people, the people's champ, George Kittle. Oh boy, this is this is tough. This is tough. Kyle Pitts might just see ridiculous, a ridiculous target share this year outside of Drake London. Uh, does anybody, can anybody name five wide receivers for the Atlanta Falcons? Because I cannot. Kyle Pitts is the play. We are drafting Kyle Pitts and we are unfortunately passing on our man, uh, George Kittle, who should be in line for a good season. Young quarterback, Probably going to be a lot of rushing for the San Francisco 49ers this year. We know George Kittle went healthy, one of the best tight ends in football. But we got to make it. We got to make that bet. And Kyle Pitts having a thousand yards as a rookie, coming in with no target competition outside of a rookie wide receiver in Drake London. We are drafting Kyle Pitts, passing on George Kittle. Uh, love you, George. But this year we got to rock with Kyle Pitts, the unicorn himself. Hopefully, y'all agree with that one. Let's see who's going to challenge Kyle Pitts to unseat this guy because I don't know if he's going to stay there. And here we go. Travis Kelsey. You know, we talked about Patrick Mahomes a couple of minutes ago and, and all the losses at the wide receiver position. No, no Tyreek Hill. You got MVS coming in. Juju Smith Schuster, the one constant, uh, the best tight end in football. He's been the best tight end in football since, you know, for over the last five, six years, Travis Kelsey. I, I do not, I do not think it's crazy to, to say 1,500 yards is within the range of possibilities for Travis Kelsey. He is he is going to feast. That offense will run through Kelsey. I get Clyde. I get Pacheco, all this other stuff. Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey could be in for the best season of his career. Devoid of wide receiver weapons there. Kyle Pitts, baby, I love you. In Dynasty, I'm taking you, Kyle. You know I'm taking you in Dynasty. But here in 2022... Give me Travis Kelsey catching passes from Patrick Mahomes as the unquestioned number one target. Bye, Kyle Pitts. And hello, Travis Kelsey. Who do we got next? Who do we got next on this draft or pass? And I know it's going to be good. Damn it, it is. It's Mandrews. It's Mark Andrews, Baltimore Ravens, all pro tight end, who just went ballistic last season. Uh, I want to do it, y'all. I, I want to say Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews. But the answer is still Travis Kelsey for 2022. I just, he is probably the best tight end option this coming season because he is the unquestioned number one target playing with one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the NFL and Patrick Mahomes. And as much as I love Lamar Jackson, you know, that 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 we we know that throwing the ball is not his his forte. He could do it. Don't don't get it twisted. But I want Travis Kelsey. I want the player, the number one target 
uh, catching passes from Patrick Mahomes. A lot of people really excited about Rashad Bateman this year. I think Andrews is probably poised for tight end two, tight end three season this year. But we're going to pass on Mark Andrews, and we are going to draft one Kyle Pitts. Uh, not Kyle Pitts, Travis Kelsey. Good night. I'm thinking Dynasty. I love you, Pitts. I'm sorry, but Travis Kelsey is the play. Add him to the tight end spot, and we are going to go to the chat to see what else is going on. Okay, I see Goatman. He just said Sutton is this year's Cooper Cup. I wouldn't go that far, but I am excited about Cortland Sutton. I am very excited, and I do think Cortland Sutton is going to be the one for Russell Wilson in Denver. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, rookie wide receiver to draft. Mm. Rookie wide receiver to draft. Let's go deep, and let's say I think a, a, a sneaky late draft target not going to say Traylon Burks, Drake London, Romeo Dubs. Uh, uh, I'm in. Romeo Dobbs, excuse me, Mr. Dobbs. I'm in. He's going to play, playing with the most efficient quarterback in NFL history and Aaron Rodgers. Romeo Dobbs is the rookie wide receiver to draft late, 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 late. Do not draft him early. Do not draft him early. Draft him late. All right, I think we're going to go to uh, defense, and we'll we'll just talk quickly about these defenses because uh, th there's some good ones in the NFL. I know a lot of you still out there play with team defenses, so you want those turnovers. Let's do some draft or pass defensive addition, and that's what I like. I played defense in college. Let's talk some defensive side of the ball, and uh, let's get into this. So we are going to go with the Rams versus the 49ers. Uh, you know, Bobby Wagner, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, you got turnovers on every level. You got players getting after the pass rush. I know they lost Von Miller. Nick Bosa on one side of the ball. Eric Armstead, Fred Warner. We're going with the Rams. I, I, I think this addition of Bobby Wagner to this defense, you guys, this is having a dynamic weapon like Bobby Wagner that can just patrol the middle, stuff the run. You still have one of the greatest defensive players of our generation in Aaron Donald manning that front line and one of the best, if not the best, secondary defender in the league in Jalen Ramsey. Give us the Rams. Give us the Rams. Rams, we are drafting the Rams, and we're passing on San Francisco, even though that defensive line and that front seven for San Francisco is going to create massive issues this year in the AFC West. Uh, and the good thing is we get to see these two teams play twice this season, but we are drafting the Rams and passing on the uh, passing on the San Francisco 49ers for 2022. Who else do we have? I know we got a couple of good team defenses that we need to talk about and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? You know, the, this was a team that defensively started off really hot last year. You could not run against Tampa Bay, but you could exploit them through the air. And we saw that happen multiple times. Uh, this one for me is easy. I still want the Los Angeles Rams. I think this defense is, is poised for an absolute monster season. Uh, Tampa Bay, I'm interested to see how some of these new defensive players play out. Uh, for the Bucs, we know Tom Brady is a little absent. He took a little vacation in training camp. No Indomitian Sue this year. Hopefully, uh, some of the players that they picked last year in the draft step up. But this one is easy for me. Give me the Rams over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for 2022. Who else do we have that could potentially unseat the Rams? And I've got a feeling I know what team is popping up. And there we go, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, you know, this is this is a great segue because L.A. loses Von Miller. Buffalo gains Von Miller. They draft young potential stud cornerback Kyir Elam to help solidify that secondary. I know they had uh, had one of the injuries back there. I believe it was Micah Hyde that was injured. It was Micah Hyde or, or maybe the other safety. Uh, but Buffalo, I mean, Edmonds at middle linebacker, uh, all the reports on Ed Oliver at the defensive line playing better, an opportunistic defense. Here's why I say Buffalo. AFC East, right? The Jets, the Patriots, the Dolphins, they get they get those teams, you know, six six games against their against their 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 division foes. And I think Buffalo is gonna force a ton of turnovers. So as much as I like the Rams. I think I would rock with the Buffalo Bills over the Rams for this season. This is a turnover, uh, turnover opportunistic type defense. I love some of the additions that they made. And, you know, with the Rams, you still have to worry about getting through uh, the NFC West as well as the conference that they play this year, you guys, the AFC West, right? The Raiders, the Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Denver Broncos. So give me... Josh, give me the Josh Allen led Buffalo Bills, but we're going to go the defensive side of the ball. We are drafting the Buffalo Bills. Rams, you had a good run. You're out of here. We're going with the Buffalo Bills. We're passing on that one, and they wrap it up for us. The Buffalo Bills end up victorious on this one. Love what that defense could potentially do. 
let's go back to the chat. Let's go back to the chat. And since we're talking defense, sleeping on the Colts D. Do not sleep on the Colts D. We didn't put them up. Can't go through everybody. But the Colts defense is going to be really nice this year as well. Again, look at the division. The Titans, the Texans, really? The Jaguars? You got to think about all of that stuff when you're picking defenses, folks. You got to look at who they're playing and the quarterbacks that those those teams are going to be, you know, uh, facing this season. And that that AFC South is not a good division. So I do think that the Colts defense is a nice sleeper type defense. People are saying San Francisco or the Ravens. Give me San Francisco. Easy peasy. And one more Broncos or Chargers. Oh, man. Can I just say neither? I just don't want to deal with the AFC West. <laughs> There's just going to be points galore in the AFC West. Both of those defenses look good. If you're asking me right now, Ray, God damn it, tell me right now. I'm asking the question, give me one. I'm going to say the Chargers defense over the Broncos. But let's get to the most important position in football. I know you guys have been waiting for this, the kickers. Let's get into some kicker talk. Draft or pass kicker edition. Man, we saw Justin Tucker crack the top 100. Tyler Bass or Justin Tucker? Give me the leg of Justin Tucker. Listen, Tyler Bass doing his thing. Top five kicker this year. But I know the Ravens trust him. They just paid him to be the highest paid kicker in NFL history. Justin Tucker is the play that I want. And, um, you know, with J.K. Dobbins potentially starting off a little slow, if Lamar can't convert him in the end zone, a lot of field goal opportunities for the Baltimore Ravens. Give me Justin Tucker. Pass on Tyler Bass. Give me Justin Tucker. And now it's Ryan Suckup or Justin Tucker. And again, I think there are only a handful of kickers that I'd rather have than Justin Tucker this season. And unfortunately, Ryan Suckup is just not that kicker, especially for those of you who get points for field goal distance. Justin Tucker, I mean, he's going to get his, you know, 10, 50 plus field goal yard attempts this season. We're going with Justin Tucker. We're drafting him, passing on Ryan Suckup. Come on, let's get somebody in here. And here's the guy I wanted to talk about. Evan McPherson exploded on the scene last year as a rookie. Uh, the, the offense of the Bengals, better offense than the Baltimore Ravens, potentially more scoring opportunities. You know, we we want Joe Burrow to convert those, but maybe a couple of additional opportunities in the red zone inside the 30 for Evan McPherson to go out there and continue on his magical rookie season. I think uh, we're going to pass on old man Tucker. You're a beast, JT. You are a beast. But we're going to roll with that new kid on the block, Evan McPherson from the Cincinnati Bengals. We are drafting Evan McPherson, and do we have anybody else that's going to challenge McPherson, or is or or is that the last one? That may that may be the last one. Evan McPherson, right there. I know uh, Tucker Carlson from the Raiders is somebody else that I'm that I'm high on from the uh, yeah Daniel Carlson. I said Tucker Carlson. Oh my goodness, Daniel Carlson, number one kicker uh, this year, and I agree with you. Daniel Carlson is a very very good kicker, but I love me some Evan McPherson. If anybody's going to challenge those guys, I do believe it is Carlson. So let's go to the chat for one last time. And I'm going to do some quick hitters. Mitch Trubisky or a ham sandwich? You add some lettuce and tomato on it, and I think I'm going to take the ham sandwich over Mitch Trubisky. Would you take CMC at number two PPR? I don't hate it. I don't hate it. He's the only guy that I believe truly has the type of upside to compete with Jonathan Taylor at the top. Thoughts on DJ Moore? Love DJ Moore. Can't stand the quarterback situation in Carolina. And the final one we're going to take a look at here, uh, Cam Akers or Saquon Barkley. Tough one. Right now, they've got Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson listed as co-starters for the Rams. I I'm excited for Akers. I want Akers, but I know Saquon Barkley is the top dog in New York. I know he's going to get every opportunity. The offense is not as good as the Rams at all. So the efficiency may be an issue for Saquon Barkley. But you're asking me right now, Saquon or Cam Akers? I'm going with Saquon Barkley, no doubt. Let's do a quick recap of some of the draft or pass players that we pick. Look at our roster that we kind of build here. We talked to a lot of quarterbacks, but at the end of the day, Josh Allen is QB1 for 2022. Draft him as such. Wide receivers, you we can have a conversation. Some of you may be watching this and saying, nah, Ray, Cooper Cup is that guy. I want Jamar Chase. Look at what he did. We went with Justin Jefferson. I think he is in line to have a Cooper Cup-esque season for the Vikings in year three. Just getting better and better. Justin Jefferson running back went with Jonathan Taylor, the stud out of Indianapolis. Uh, you know, he's RB one, unless Christian McCaffrey or Austin Eckler, or Najee Harris unseats him. JT Travis Kelsey, 1500 yards, 
book it. He is going to ball out this season. And one of the beautiful things about Kelsey, since his second season in the NFL, the most durable tight end in the NFL. He has not missed a game that the Chiefs have not held him out uh, for playoff purposes. Travis Kelsey, a beast. Defense, the Rams had a good run, but we went with the Buffalo Bills. And kickers, yes, Daniel Carlson is good. Justin Tucker is good. But in this edition of Draft or Pass, we went ahead and went with the Cincinnati Bengals young, young stud, Evan McPherson. So, hey, I appreciate y'all tapping in uh, for this first uh, first draft or pass of the fantasy football season here in 2022 over at Bleacher Report. Thank you, everybody in the chat. I hope this was a fun, entertaining show and most importantly, actionable. So for Ray Garvin, you can find me on Twitter at Ray GQ. Bleacher Report draft or pass fantasy 2022 edition. I think we're going to go ahead and get up out of here. I appreciate y'all. Have a good one. I'm out. Peace.